Hi, this is Sean Wildermuth. You might know me from the Hello World podcast at hwpod.com or my plural site courses, which you can see at seanw.me slash psauthor. I get a lot of questions on my courses that aren't really about the technology I'm teaching, but instead they're about some things they see me do while I'm coding. So I decided to do a couple of quick videos on YouTube to show some of these little tricks that I learned over the years, part of the muscle memory of the coding I do. So I just have a number of tips here. I'm just going to walk through one after another, and they're all about the shortcut keys I tend to use in my courses. The first one is the show helper shortcut key. This is a really common one. I use this all the time. Let me show you what it's about. Here in Visual Studio, I'm uh, working on my Wilder blog open source project that is uh, going to take over as a new version of my website. And anywhere that I'm doing C Sharp code or other sorts of code, but C Sharp's probably the most common. If I needed a new class, let's say in here in my tag action, I was going to use a new file object, file equals new file, but I don't now have the system IO namespace added. There's a number of times in development where Visual Studio wants to help you and it helps you with this little light bulb, which you can use the mouse to come over here and look at the different things you can do. But I hate taking my hands off the keyboard since I'm coding. And so instead to open up this quick actions, I can use the show helper shortcut, which is control period. And it's gonna give me those different options. Here I can just say using system IO, it'll add that namespace. We get our blue class name. And so I know it's now a valid one. This quick action shortcut can be used all over the place for a variety of different things you might wanna do. But anytime you see that light bulb show up, control period will go ahead and pop open the different options. Let me show you another way. So if we come up here to any of the namespaces, we'll see that there's some of them are grayed out. The quick option says you don't really need this. There's no code that's using it. Control period again is gonna give me the option to remove the unnecessary usings as one of the options, which I'll do just to clean up some of my code. So that's the first shortcut. The next shortcut I use a lot is Alt Enter. In Visual Studio, we have this properties panel. And if you're in a file that has some level of properties that you want to look at, at any time you can hold down Alt and hit Enter, and it'll take you to that property window. But where I find it most useful is actually in the projects. So if I have the Solution Explorer focused so that it's blue, not gray in my case with this theme, and I hit Alt Enter, I'm gonna get the project properties. Normally, and I see a lot of people do this, sort of wasting their time right-clicking on the project, coming way down here into properties where they could have used the shortcut key, which of course I'm a big fan of. So Alt Enter in the Solution Explorer, and it's taken me to those special property pages of whatever project type you're actually looking at. The next shortcut, the next one is format code. This is the first one that uses a chord of keys where you start it with control K and then you hit a second key to actually have the shortcut happen. Let's see it in action. So in any C sharp code, this is interesting that if you start to have problems with different indentions, you can hold down control K and then you'll see on the bottom, it says control K pressed, waiting for second key of chord. And I hit control D and it's going to go ahead and format that page. So as you have the code looking a little silly or ugly, or even if you change things like the indention, that'll help you reformat it to the same spe specifications you have for, for formatting, regardless of what it is. And this works on a variety of different kinds of file. We'll actually see if we open up a JSON file, that if I were to change some of the indention here and use the same key, control K, control D, it's going to format JSON files as well. Now there's two different options here. One is control K, control D, which formats the document. That's what the D is for. And there's also a control K, control F for just the selected region. So let's assume I have some weird indentions going on. If I just select this and do control K, control F, it'll only format what is selected. The control K, control D will always format the entire file. The next shortcut I like is commenting in and out. This is another chord shortcut key, control K, control C or U to add or remove comments. Let's assume that you wanted to comment out some piece of functionality. Let's say this entire action, control K again, just like before waiting for the second quarter of the key and control C will add that comment 
to it. Doing the same thing, selecting it and control K, control U will uncomment it. This allows you to comment out big sections of code pretty easily, knowing you can reverse it by using the control U for uncomment. And like before, this works on a variety of different files. The next shortcut key is definitions. This is a set of shortcut keys I like to use a lot when I'm trying to figure out how things work. So we go back to our controller here, and let's say I'm using the controller class and I really want to understand where it's from. Now the controller class is defined in some library. It's not defined in my own code, but if I hit F12, which is go to definition, it's going to actually open up a generated file that shows me the entire interface for that class. If this had been a class that I built, like something like the interface for mail service, which is in my project, doing the same thing will take me to the actual file where that interface is defined. There is an alternative here, and that is Alt F12. This will give you a peek at the interface. What this actually does, if you hit Alt F12, is opens up a small window into that file so you can quickly look at it knowing you're going to close it when you're done. This is the alternative to opening it up as a full file or not. The next shortcut key that I'm a fan of is the quick launch. This is one that was introduced somewhat recently, I think in Visual Studio 2012 or it might have been 2014. We'll see that there's a quick launch window up here in the corner. In fact, it shows you that the shortcut key is controlled Q and you can get to that window at any point by hitting control Q. And as you start to type, I'm going to type the word controller. It's going to show me a bunch of different things that it could be. It could be one of my open documents. It could be one of the options in any of the file menus, or even could be looking for NuGet packages that have that name. And so they're trying to give you a quick way to get at things. Now, using this to open up, let's say the root controller class isn't that interesting because it only looks for open documents. But for me, this has made not having to go into the tools options ever again. If I want to do something like code formatting, we can see that one of the things it searches under is actually options in the options dialog. So if I come down here to the JavaScript formatting, it actually will open up the options dialog focused on what it found, which happened to be formatting specifically inside of JavaScript. So this allows a very quick way for me to actually look at and find certain things in the command structure. So if I wanted to do something like run debug, I could type debug up there and I could certainly look at the debugging setting, but I could also go ahead and pick a debug window output as maybe what I'm looking for. And you could continue typing to hone in on what you're actually looking for. So I quite like this more to look for specific operations inside the IDE than to look for individual files. I actually have another shortcut key for doing that second piece. So instead of using the Solution Explorer to dig into files, we have another way. And that other way is using control comma that's going to take you to the navigation pane. So navigation is pretty cool. Control comma will allow me to go ahead and just type in some phrase and controller was in there as the last one we used. And I can go ahead and find the different files that I might be looking for. Or if I just know the complete name, like I know site.less, that will go ahead and open up that file for me. So it makes a quick way for me to not have to leave the keyboard to find and open individual files. So if I wanted to look at the index.cshtml file, there I have it, press enter, and once Visual Studio catches up, it'll go ahead and open that for me. So control comma gives me that fast way to go ahead and open up other files inside my solution. The next shortcut key is open command window. This is really useful when you need to open up a console to do some things like run a test or add Bower packages or whatever else you need from a command window. But there's a caveat with this one. Opening up a command window with alt space is really useful. It goes ahead and opens up a command console directly in whatever the current folder of what you're looking at is in. But it does require an add-in. So if we go over to Tools, Extensions, and Updates, 
The add-in that allows this is one that Matt Christensen has written. Like all great add-ins, they're probably written by Matt. This is called Open Command Line. So if you want to add this to your Visual Studio, just go online and search for Open Command Line, and you'll see the one that was written by Matt Christensen. That's what allows you to whatever folder you happen to be in. Let's say I'm in the WW root alt space and now I'm in a console directly in that same folder. Really convenient to open up consoles quickly. The next shortcut key is much like that. The new file shortcut key. Now at first, you might think I'm talking about the add new file, which they call new item, control shift A. And this is a very useful shortcut key, but I try, I'm not using it that much these days because instead I'm using one from another extension called the add new file extension, again by Matt. And this will allow me to create new empty files really quickly. Let me show you the add-in. This add-in is called add new file. And again, it's by Matt. So make sure you get the one that's called that and is by Matt. And what this allows me to do is whatever folder I'm in, by hitting Shift F2, it's going to allow me to create a brand new file. So I could create a new class by going foo.cs or file.json. And all this is really doing is it's attempting to create a new file based on whatever format you're specifying. And if it knows the format, like JSON, like CS for C Sharp, a uh, number of other files like CS HTML, it's going to give you some very, very minimal boilerplate in that page. Let me do it with a JSON file so you can see. Because it knows it's a JSON, it's going to start it with the object syntax and allow you to just get started typing. But the other thing that makes this really useful for me is that when I add a new file, let's say I wanted to add a new view in a new folder, I could say views foobar index.cshtml. Now, the reason this path is interesting, let me cancel this for a minute, is that there is no folder called foobar. There's only root and shared. By specifying the full path, file new is going to go ahead and create views if it needs to, which it doesn't, but at foobar, which it does, and then create the new file for me. There's my new CSHTML file to go ahead and add in, but I now have a new foobar directory because I specified that it was going to be created in that folder. And so now sort of boilerplating the bunch of files that I need at first becomes a lot faster. So the two extensions that I've shown you are open command line and add new file. Again, both by Matt Christensen. And you can also see more videos of mine either here on this YouTube channel or over at Pluralsight at seanw.me slash psauthor. Thanks for watching.